I now call to order the special session meeting of the Board of Commissioners of the City of Tarpon Springs on Thursday, September 6, 2022 at 7 p.m. Roll call, please. Mayor Vaticiotis. Here. Vice Mayor Lund. Here. Commissioner Carr. Here. Commissioner Eisner. Here. Commissioner Kuyas. Here. Before we get started, um, I want to uh, mention that tonight's special session um, has a single purpose, and that's to provide the public an opportunity to uh, comment, speak on the tentative budget, ask any questions that they might have. Uh, this is one of two public meetings that we're going to have on the budget. Uh, the second scheduled for September 21st at 6.30 p.m., also here at City Hall. Um, there's some state regulatory requirements that we're going to need to satisfy tonight. Mr. Herring will be taking care of that, so uh, let's get on uh, with the meeting. Also, uh, one last thing. In special sessions, we still have public comment. Uh, we didn't have public comments last year for this meeting, and I asked why. And, and uh, with the help of the staff, uh, they found in Florida Statutes 200.065, which governs this meeting, uh, it states very clearly that the first substantive issue discussed shall be the percentage increase in millage over the rollback. Um, so that precludes any public uh, comments that we would have uh, for tonight. So, um, Mr. LaCourse, if I may, I'm going to turn the meeting over to Mr. Herring so he yes. can review the procedures. Uh, Mr. Herring, please proceed. Uh, good evening, Mayor and Commissioners. Um, Ron Herring, Finance Director. Florida Statute 200.065 sets up procedures for the adoption of the millage rate and the budget. The tentative millage rate must be approved before the tentative budget. The tentative millage, the tentative millage rate for tax year 2022 is 5.37, the same as the previous year. The tentative millage rate of 5.37 is 12.39% above the rollback rate for, of 4.7781. The rollback rate is the rate that would provide the same dollar amount of revenues as a previous year. The increase over the rollback rate is being used to fund personnel and operating costs. Is that it? Yes. Okay. Uh, the next, we have the, um, the, the city clerk will read the uh, resolution in entirety, and that will be resolution 2022-31, tentatively adopting the millage rate for tax year 2022. Resolution 2022-31, a resolution of the Board of Commissioners of the City of Tarpon Springs, Florida, tentatively adopting the millage rate for tax year 2022, whereas a public hearing was held on September 6, 2022 at 7 p.m. to adopt a tentative millage rate. Now, therefore, be it resolved by the Board of Commissioners of the City of Tarpon Springs, Florida, that one, the ad valor millage rate for tax year 2022 of the City of Tarpon Springs is hereby tentatively established at 5.3700 a 12.39 increase over the rollback rate of 4.7781. Two, the city staff is hereby directed to notify all pertinent governmental agencies of the provisions hereof as required by law. That is the reading of resolution 2022-31 in its entirety. Okay, thank you, Ms. Jacobs. Um, it's uh, time to go to public comments. Are there any public comments on this resolution on the millage rate, um, the percent increase or anything related to the matter? Here to Lacks 514 Ashland Avenue, I, I thought from the instructions I read online is y'all were supposed to discuss uh, the reason why you were not going back to the rollback rate. But at this point, my question is this. I've watched some of the budget meetings either in person or online, and I have yet to see that y'all were provided any information of what the budget would be if you set your, uh, your rollback rate at 10%, which would change your rate probably down to maybe 534, 535. I don't know if you ever got any information on, instead of raising it 12.89, if we only raised it 10% above the rollback rate, what would that tax rate be? Uh, I know maybe it's pennies or a few dollars. Some people that makes a big difference, especially the way some properties have changed hands and new people are going to be hit right off the top. Uh, and I also have to say, uh, even though our tax rate and our amount we pay is going up, 
I still feel we get the best value in Tarpon Springs. And if you really look at your tax bill, people have to closely look at it. I know we have our ability to communicate here and there's public meetings for the Pinellas County Commission and the Swift Mud and all these PSTAs, but who has the time to, to do all that? So if you really look at your tax bill when you get it, we're not that big of a portion. And for what we pay, I feel we get good value. Uh, again, so my only concern was if y'all got any kind of alternative option to view. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Are there any other public comments? Um, IT, are there any um, uh, remote access comments? At this point, we do not have anyone online for Zoom. Thank you. Uh, Ms. Jacobs, have we received any emails? We have not received any emails. Okay. Um, to, to address the question from Mr. Delacus, I don't think we went through that specifically, but um, after the um, uh, discussion concerning the millage rate, I did produce a memorandum that I forwarded to the uh, commission uh, showing what our neighboring full service communities have as millage rates compared to Tarpon Springs and out of the what I would consider the other four were the lowest uh, by far and that even includes the uh, Palm Harbor unincorporated area they pay a, a much higher millage rate than we do and then also uh, the holiday area pays a higher millage rate than we do and from my perspective at least, the cost of government isn't any different there than it is here. And so I, I do think that we're providing the residents uh, a benefit, even though when you look at your tax bill, you can't really get a sense of that. Um, you pay what you pay, and, and uh, you, um, unfortunately you don't have the same um, assessed value tax bill that you could look at as kind of a hypothetical from Palm Harbor or Holiday or any of these other areas to see what your tax bill there would be. Um, also, uh, we looked at Dunedin, Oldsmar, and Safety Harbor. Their millage rate is lower, but of course, um, that that's because they're not a full-service community. They're um, uh, they don't have a police department. They made that decision 25 years ago. They went with the sheriff, and um, their millage rate is about one mil less than actually a little more than one mil less than ours. And, and my suspicion is. Um, at, because we, we went through this 25 years ago, the residents took the authority of, uh, of dissolving the police department away from the commission and, and said if there's any discussion of that or any decision to be made, it would be left up to the residents. So I don't think that that sentiment has changed at all, and, and I just wanted to kind of give a comparison, although it doesn't directly answer your question, at least addresses the millage. Um, and then we are, for example, uh, six police officers behind on a per capita basis, and we've added two. So we're not even up to what our standard uh, service uh, measures should be. Uh, hopefully we'll improve on that in the future years. So um, let me move on to, um, actually, let me move on to commission comments. Um, are there any commissioner comments on this? Uh, Vice Mayor Lunt. Um, I have no comment. Um, Commissioner Carr. Yeah, thanks, Mayor. Uh, I will stand behind that. I believe we do need to reduce the millage rate. I got my trim notice in the mail with the details. Um, looking at this, there's a lot of different entities that the city residents pay and businesses pay into. Uh, I do understand, though, I mean, it's only a fraction of what the cost is to the city for each individual household. Uh, but I do believe it, at this time, the city needs to give some of the money back to the residents and not tax the residents as high as they are right now. Uh, I believe with the combination of state grants and state appropriations along with the ARPA funding and other um, applications that are in for funding through federal funding, I think this is a, an opportunity for the city to move forward with capital projects and also pull back some of the money on the millage rate to give it back to its residents. So with this, I'm not going to be able to support it tonight. And I would suggest that we lower the, the millage rate. Okay. Um, Commissioner Eisner. <clears throat> Thank you, Mayor. Um, Ron, can I ask you a question? Um, with the millage rate the way it is right now, do we have a balanced budget? Yes, we do. Do we have an overage where we have 
extra money to just spend on anything? Well, the balance, nothing within the, within the balanced budget, but we do have our unassigned reserves. Right, I understand about the reserves. Yeah. So it's not like we're taxing people just to have extra money in the coffers, correct? Correct. So there has been increases for um, pretty much everybody that works for the city straight across, correct? Correct, got, yeah. That prior to this was not in the forecast nobody knew that uh, inflation was going to hit at what kind of level. Is this all correct? Correct. So saying that, I, I wish to support the millage rate. I don't want to give people a tax burden. I personally don't want to pay a tax burden. But where there's a need, it's unfortunate. But that that's just something that's part of life. And I, I mean, I, I feel very bad. I don't know. I don't have another answer. Just lowering it um, to appease some, and then putting others in uh, in a position that they have to make up for it. Um, I, I just don't see that we can do anything short of removing people, removing police officers, removing people cleaning up the streets. Um, you know, whatever. I, I don't see a plan to reduce what we have. So until I see a plan to reduce what we have at the same time in reducing uh, the millage rate, I can't go along with uh, Commissioner Carr's you know, response of, of lowering the millage rate. So thank you, Mayor, that's all I have to say. Uh, Commissioner Kulias. Um, I'm gonna go for it this time, but I just for the sake of uncertainty, what can happen next year and going into the following year, but I, I do think this board, at, either sometime next year or the following year, should consider a plan to have some type of tenths or hundreds of a points reduced over time and have that rate knocked down. But for uncertainty and making sure we take care of our staff and uh, I'm willing to approve it for tonight. Okay. Um, just for full disclosure, this was discussed before and I, we may have some people there that are watching now that uh, weren't watching then. But we, um, the one thing that was brought up as far as what the average um, residential, resident single family home assessed value was, uh, we didn't quite have that. The staff provided that and that was two, $207,000. And the two millage rates that were discussed was one tenth of a mill and five hundredths of a mill. And the one tenth of a mill would put $20.80 in a family's pocket for the entire year. That's what one tenth mill reduction would do. And then the one five, five hundredths of a mill reduction would put $10.40 reduction. So I don't want to give the, the residents the impression that we're talking a whole lot of money as far as millage cuts and the amount of money that they would be getting uh, as far as any kind of a reduction. And then there's also a history of um, uh, millage reductions and the city manager is well aware of them um, that occurred very similar to the circumstances we have right now where there was a housing bubble and um, millage cuts were uh, being done in order to offset the increases of the valuations and the market crashed and as a result it took 10 years to get back up to the revenue level that um, that took place as a reduction of both the uh, market crash on the real estate and the, um, and the um, uh, millage reductions that occurred. And that data is readily available from uh, City Hall if anyone's interested and wants to follow up on that. So is there any other comments, any follow-ups? Yeah, I just got a quick um, comment. Um, talking about a budget that's balanced is we could spend every dollar that we want and more. We have multiple projects. Even if we raise the millage rate, we could continue to spill it or spend it. So yes, the budget is balanced, but that's a hard comment to make when you could say you could pull some of it back and give it to some families who are hurting currently in this circumstance. Individuals who are in fixed incomes. And I know you all know how I feel. I just want to make sure I put it out there in the public because um, I, I truly think it's something that it's our responsibility to give some back to the community. Um, regardless if it's $20, $100, or $150, it, it accumulates over time. Each year we reduce the millage rate. So um, with that, I still believe it's the best interest to uh, give some back to the community. So. Okay, well, I appreciate that. Um, I don't recall the com any of the commissioners not supporting any of the 
um, initiatives that were put forward uh, that would reduce the millage rate. I know, Commissioner Carr, you had uh, a little concern of uh, spending the entire 600000 but eventually we, we did that. And um, if, we, if there is a millage rate at this point, what the ballot budget means is something has to be cut. And even though you get $20 from a one-tenth mill back and a five-hundredths mill from, uh, you get uh, $10 from a five-hundredths mill, that equates to $240,000 for the one-tenth mill and uh, approximately $120,000 from a five-tenth. So the budget as it stands right now, we would have to find something to cut in, in the amount of 200 and about 240000 or 120000 I'm not sure what that would be. And I, I was pretty clear in some of the things that could be cut, but my experience on the budget, uh, on the millage cut that was done uh, in 2019, um, the very next year when I became a commissioner, people were uh, grousing a bit because they would rather give the $20 back or the $10 back that they got in exchange for some of the things that we couldn't support because we didn't have enough money in the budget. I understand, but if this is, if there's some intent or some calculated um, um, thought of going forward with this, it's going to take a whole lot of study rather than just discussing it here in the meeting tonight, and we should have given that a lot more forethought than we had up until this point. Yeah, Mayor, I understand. We've talked about this in the past. I'm not trying to come out on a whim. I shared it in the past. I don't support the millage right, I understand. at where it's at, and so I'm not trying to say let's rehash it out. I'm just sharing the reasons behind why I'm not going to approve it tonight. Right, and I'm not trying to cause an issue. I just don't want there to be any confusion or any kind of um, misinformation or at least misimpressions by the public that we're talking about huge amounts of money that would be put back in their money in their pocket from a millage cut. I, I think if there was a way to do that without any concern that we would be getting ourselves into trouble, the fact that we're the lowest millage of our competitors and, and I don't see why, how we would be paying any different for government than anybody else would, I, I, I think that if we want to cut millage um, there's going to have to be some hard decisions that are going to be made in that regard. So, uh, but I appreciate that, Commissioner Carr. I'm I was saying this with um, with all due respect to everybody. I just um, I, I think it's easy to talk about millage cuts. It's easy to give a millage cut and maybe um, you know just as a token cut, but ultimately that could cause problems. And I think we just need to be a little more uh, for, have a little more forethought in in taking that approach before we get there. So um, if there's no other comments. I wanted to say. Go ahead. Uh, we, we may want to tell the public how the, the county may be reducing rates too. So that, that would be an additional savings in their households too. So, you know, I was for dropping a little bit just to help increase that uh, decrease that the county would be giving. But like I said, uh, you know, I would wear on the side with um, you know, recessions, just being, you know, conservative and doing all that. But I think this could be for a discussion, whether it be a planned, you know, five-year or 10-year approach to take it down a little bit at some point in the future. Right. I understand. Thank you. Um, no other comments. Roll call, please. Aye. Oh, excuse me. Just a moment. Commissioner Eisner. Mayor, I come from the school of thumb where um, if a suggestion is made, there has to be a solution that comes with it. And uh, I don't think there's anybody up here that would like, uh, would not like to lower the millage rate. But unless you can give a plan of attack on how you're going to get the money and what you're going to remove um, as right now as we have in the budget, it's fruitless to just speak about lowering it for the sake of lowering it a percentage point that, that, that evaluates to $20 or $30 or $40. So unless somebody wants to come up with a, a formula of what this 200000 or 500000 or a million is going, to, where we're we going to get it from, it doesn't make sense to even speak about lowering something that we don't have to lower. I think we kind of went through the budget very um, diligently and we realized there was a lot of infrastructure that needed to get done. We still don't have 
a lot of infrastructure that we may even need to go out and get our bond on. We're in the minus, not in the positive. So I, I, I just don't understand. I mean, it, it looks good for the camera to sit there and ask for a, you know, a smaller millage rate for the uh, residents, but it's not feasible in, you know, in, in at least this budget. As Commissioner Coolia said, in the future, we could always look at and see what needs to be done. So okay. thank you. Okay. Um, no other comments. Uh, the lights are not on. My little wake up for the commissioner comments. Roll call, please. We need a motion. Oh, we have a need a motion uh, and a second. Thank you, Ms. Jacobs. Uh, motion to approve resolution 2022 31, tentatively adopting the millage rate for the tax year 2022. I'll second. Okay, roll call, please. Commissioner Kulias? Yes. Commissioner Eisner? Yes. Commissioner Carr? No. Vice Mayor Lund? Yes. Mayor Vaticiotis? Yes. Okay, move on to item number two, resolution 2022-32, tentatively adopting the budget for fiscal year 2022-2023. Uh, Mr. Herring, if you can read the procedures. Uh, yes, the tentative budget for fiscal year 2023 for the whole city is $75,668,303, an increase of $6,512,671 or 9.4% over the adopted budget for fiscal year 2022. The majority of the increase is related to personnel and operating cost increases. Okay. Thank you. Ms. Jacobs, if you could... Um Read the resolution in its entirety, please. Resolution 2022-32, a resolution of the Board of Commissioners of the City of Tarpon Springs, Florida, tentatively adopting the budget for fiscal year 2022-23. Whereas a public hearing was held on September 6, 2022, at 7 p.m. to adopt a tentative budget. Now, therefore, be it resolved by the Board of Commissioners of the City of Tarpon Springs, Florida, that one, the City of Tarpon Springs annual budget for fiscal year 2022-23 is hereby tentatively adopted. Two, the City staff is hereby directed to notify all pertinent governmental agencies of the provisions hereof as required by law. That is the reading of Resolution 2022-32 in its entirety. Thank you. Okay, let's go to public comments. Are there any public comments on this item? This is the budget itself. IT. Are there any remote access comments? At this time, we do not have anyone in attendance. Thank you. Thank you. Um, are there any commission comments, Vice Mayor Lund? There are a lot of good things in this budget. We have budgeted for a couple of more police officers. Um, doesn't get us up to the level where we should be, but at least we're progressing in that direction. We've budgeted for a few new positions that are necessary to keep our service levels up within the community. Um, we've also budgeted for a person to handle grants. We keep saying that we're gonna have grants. You guys have been asking for grant managers for as long as I've been coming to these meetings, which has been a while, and so we're finally there. So that's about all I wanted to say. There's, there's, we spent a, quite a lot of time on this budget this year. Um, yes, we had a little bit of extra money because of the increases and so forth, but we weren't exactly keeping pace before, and we're getting to that point now, so thank you. Thank you, uh, Vice Mayor Lund. Um, Commissioner Carr. Yeah, I mean, I look at some of the same things that Vice Mayor said. There's a lot of great things in this budget this year. Uh, we've seen an increase across the board on the CRA and within the general fund. Uh, we saw some great uh, grants and also federal appropriations uh, through the ARPA funding and state appropriations. Um, there's, there's just a lot of great projects and capital expenditures that we're going to be having this year and coming year for capital projects around the city, if it's repaving roads, adding sidewalks, um, additional things for recreation, uh, and also supporting our staff with um, increases above the traditional um, increase of 3% um, in the range scale. So. Uh, with that, I do uh, think that you all did a great job as your first budget um, as a board. Uh, there's going to be many more to come. So I uh, hope you guys will just add on to this for the next budget season and we can continue to uh, move this great city forward. Thank you. Okay. Commissioner Eisner. I'm good. No comment. Commissioner Kuyas. Hey, yeah, happy to support this budget. We 
put a lot of good positions in, working on, working on a lot of good projects. Uh, the ARPA money, I think uh, we're all proud to see where it's going to be spent on. And, um, you know, our main focus was, in, uh, especially working with the city manager, was retention. Retention of our police department, our fire department, our employees, our everyday city staff employees making sure we're getting benefits up and that way we can compete with the rest of the nearby municipalities because uh, they're, you know, they're, they do it all behind the scenes and, and they deserve it. So thank you, Mayor. Yeah, I think the uh, budget was a uh, no frills budget. Um, our focus was retention. That was the theme. We were asked early on for some accommodation by our, uh, at least the police department, the police, um, Benevolent Association Union that we accommodated and understood the need and watched what other cities were uh, was happening in other cities with regard to pay for their police um, and we realized we were going to be next in line. We've got that uh, contract coming up for negotiation this next year and, and uh, going to effect of in October uh, 1st, 2023. So there's a lot of work to be done there. Um, I'm very pleased with this budget. I obviously wish things cost less but they don't and um, i think everybody every resident understands that whether they're at the gas pump or at the grocery store and i think um, it's interesting that our our employees didn't ask for a whole lot of things our supervisors came forward with some requests and and uh, we we're able to hold our hold the line which was probably the most critical thing was the health care plan um, not any surprises there, and that that was that allowed us to recover some of that uh, the the money that we were able to put back into um, some of the services and and uh, our again our focus on retention. So um, I don't have anything more to say, and uh, um, I'm going to ask for a motion in a second. A motion to approve this year's budget. Can we get a second. I'll second. Okay. Um, Roll call, please. Commissioner Kouyas? Yes. Commissioner Eisner? Yes. Commissioner Carr? Yes. Vice Mayor Lund? Yes. Mayor Batikiotis? Yes. Okay, this concludes the um, special session and um, it is adjourned at 727. And now we're gonna go into the Community Redevelopment Agency meeting um, for the same purpose. Um, I want to uh, call the meeting to order at this point at 727. Roll call, please. Chair Vatikiotis? Yeah, here. Vice Chair Lund? Yes. Commissioner Carr? Here. Commissioner Eisner? Here. Commissioner Kouyas? Here. Okay, as I stated, the, um, the purpose of the meeting is the same as it was um, for the um, uh, general uh, fund and, and the regular budget. And uh, we're going to go to um, item number one, which is resolution 2022-02, tentatively adopting the budget for fiscal year 2022-2023. Uh, Mr. Herring, can you read the procedures for that? Yes, the tentative CRA budget for fiscal year 2023 is $785,733, an increase of 141629 or 21.9%. Over the adopted budget for fiscal year 2022, the increase is due to taxable values increasing 14.61%, which is being put towards CRA projects. Okay, thank you, Mr. Herring. Um, Ms. Jacobs, could you read the resolution in its entirety, please? This is a Community Redevelopment Resolution 2022-02, a resolution of the Community Redevelopment Agency of the City of Tarpon Springs, Florida, tentatively adopting the budget for fiscal year 2022-23, whereas a public hearing was held on September 6, 2022 at 7 p.m. to adopt a tentative budget. Now, therefore, be resolved by the Community Redevelopment Agency of the City of Tarpon Springs, Florida, that Section 1, the Community Redevelopment Agency's annual budget for fiscal year 2022-23, is hereby tentatively adopted. Section two, the city staff is hereby directed to notify all pertinent governmental agencies of the provisions hereof as required by law. That's the reading of the Community Redevelopment Agency Resolution 2022-02 in its entirety. Thank you, Ms. Jacobs. Are there any public comments on this uh, resolution on the Community Redevelopment Agency budget? This is an area that um, 
encompasses the majority of downtown and, and runs down alternate 19 south to the sponge docks and just catches just a little bit of that area. It's a tax increment financing uh, district that the taxes were um, set about 25 years ago, so any additional increases on taxes go into a special fund that is used for making improvements to that area. Um, if there are no public comments, I'm going to ask IT, are there any remote access comments? And we do not have anyone attending online. Thank you. Ms. Jacobs, nothing for emails. We've received no okay. emails. Uh, let's go to commission comments, uh, Vice Mayor Lund. I have no comments. Thank you, Commissioner Carr. Yeah, a couple items, just a reminder. Um, the CRA is um, there to encourage growth and remove blighted properties. I think the city's done a great job with this over the years. Um, there's still work to be done. Uh, within the CRA, there's multiple grants available within the properties within the CRA. The mayor talked about it being on in our downtown area along the bike trail from Mears to Live Oak and um, in the Ultra 19 corridor as well, too. Uh, a couple things I'm looking forward to, hopefully in the near future, is seeing a parking garage in downtown area to help the parking for the businesses and the different events, and also um, to come up with some type of plan for the, um, the old Hoppin property at the top of the bayou um, that falls within the CRA, um, short term and long term as well too. Uh, but with that, I'm excited with the additional grant money that we were able to budget this year like we've had in previous years uh, to, su to supplement the uh, facade grants and different grants that are going on within the CRA. Thanks. Thank you, Commissioner Carr. Uh, Commissioner Eisner, do you have anything? No comment. Commissioner Kulias? No comments. Okay, I'm, I'm good with the Community Redevelopment Agency budget. Um, do we have a- Motion uh, to approve, Mayor. Thank you, is there a second? Second. Okay, roll call, please. Commissioner Kulias? Yes. Commissioner Eisner? Yes. Commissioner Carr? Yes. Vice Chair Lent? Yes. Chair Vaticiotis? Yes, thank you. Uh, that concludes this agenda at um, 7.32. I'm just gonna quickly ask commission whether any have any comments. It's not on our agenda, but I just wanna ask that, whether you have any um, announcements or anything that you wish to make, Commissioner Lund, uh, Vice Mayor Lund. I think it's been a interesting process for some of us who are new. <laughs> yeah. Um, we really dove into it this year, but I think we, we did a good job. So thank you. glad to see us progress this way. Thank you. Commissioner Carr. Yeah, uh, sorry, I missed the last meeting. Uh, I was out sick with COVID and didn't want to come spread it to the, to the group. So appreciate it's good that you season. stayed home. <laughs> Thank you from all of us. Um, <laughs> Commissioner Eisner. <laughs> Thank you. Um, I'm just glad how it all worked out. I mean, you have five different people, five different ideas on what we want to do. And I think it, uh, there was no blood spilled. So I, I like that. That was good. Commissioner Kulias. I'm proud of this budget. We're all working together, and uh, I, I would only ask maybe if it's quarterly, we can uh, get reports to produce to see what's been spent, and that would be it. Yeah, okay. I, it's actually a, it, it pretty, um, obviously everyone, every one of these is different, um, and um, everybody has ideas, but I think uh, for the most part, everybody stuck to the basics of uh, again, uh, retention and providing services to the residents. I think we're very sober of the way we approach the capital improvement uh, program in the sense that we didn't have to spend all the money at one time and we are gonna try and get some of the things that have already been approved completed um, with the fact that we'll actually be looking at some of the money that's there and, and uh, once we collect our thoughts a little more as far as priorities coming out of the um, um, not just the comprehensive plan obviously is being updated, but our strategic plan is coming out with what the residents would like to see as far as the focus on expenditures and, and um, benefits and services and amenities that they would like to see in the, in the city in the future. So I'm really looking forward to that. That should be coming out, what, in about a month, right? In about a month, we'll be getting the final report um, in front of the commission for approval at that time. I'm really looking forward to that. So then we can go back and look at the uh, capital project uh, over the next year or so. That being said, uh, the meeting's adjourned at 7.30, 7.34 p.m. Record for us.
Yeah, 734 is the record.